Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab. And today we're gonna to be checking out two new Z590 motherboards from MSI, specifically the MEG Z590 Ace, which is this one here. Um, pretty expensive motherboard, but loads and loads of cool features. And we'll be pairing that up against the MAG Z590 Tomahawk Wi-Fi. So the Tomahawk, obviously it's been a very, very popular board on AMD systems with Intel. Pretty much the same, it's very, very good value for usually usually for what you get. It usually has great power circuitry for the price and a whole bunch of features. In terms of pricing, we are looking at kind of polar opposites here. The Z590 MEG Ace is retailing for around $500 in the US or around 540 pounds in the UK. The Tomahawk though, around $270 or 230 pounds here in the UK. So. Pretty much half the price, but does it have half the features? Is it half as good when it comes to uh, overclocking and performance? We will see whether it's worth spending double the amount on uh, to get to get some extra gubbins on the Ace here. So the Ace obviously uh, is one of my favorite motherboards. I've used it in a lot of my features and the Z390 version was an awesome motherboard as was the, the 490 version too. I've used that in a lot of my benchmarking and the Z590 Ace as well. It's been handling the 11900K pretty well in a lot of my benchmarking as well. So. The Tomahawk, you may know from AMD systems, it's been very, very popular on the uh, B450 chipset, uh, thanks to the fact that it had pretty good power circuitry for the price. So which one should you go for? You know, should you splash out and go for the Ace or should you try and save some cash and go for the Tomahawk? What do you lose in terms of features going for the Tomahawk? If any overclocking performance do you lose? And uh, what about M uh, you know, your cooling your M.2 SSD and that kind of thing. So all that stuff we'll be looking at today in uh, previewing the board's features, seeing how they perform and uh, a lot of other stuff as well. So stick around, we'll be going into uh, lots of detail on those things. So next up, please subscribe to my channel and uh, don't forget to turn on notifications to let you, let you know basically when I upload new videos. I will be uploading a load of cool stuff over the next few weeks, so definitely stay tuned for that. And uh, also like this video if, you, if, if it was informative and subscribing basically means that I can continue to do these videos and uh, bring you more cool stuff in future and having your support means a lot as well. So don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications and like this video. Okay, so let's taking a look at the Tomahawk now then, and there are a total of seven Type A USB ports on the rear panel, and one of those is USB 3.2 Gen 2. There are four USB 3.2 Gen 1, also known as USB 3, and a further two USB 2 ports. You also get DisplayPort and HDMI outputs if your CPU supports onboard graphics. There's a USB BIOS flashback button, a Type C USB port as well, and uh, there's also 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, 802.11ax Wi-Fi, and the audio ports for the onboard Realtek ALC4080. Checking out the VRMs and power circuitry now then, and the VRMs have a total of 14 power phases going directly to the CPU. And uh, the VRM heatsinks are reasonably large as well, certainly some of the larger ones that I've seen off the cheaper Z590 boards, although they aren't connected by a heat pipe like they are on the ACE. However, this was still enough to keep the maximum temperature below 58 degrees C, which is a great result, considering that was dealing with the Core i9-11900K, and there's clearly plenty of headroom there as well. There are a total of six SATA ports on the board, and if your case supports a USB Type-C port, then you'll be pleased to know that there is a Type-C header on the motherboard too. There are a total of three M.2 ports with the top port supporting PCI Express 4.0 and that heatsink had a peak temperature of a rather high 70 degrees C in my stress test which is one of the higher results that we've seen so far. Okay, moving on to the Ace now then, and what an absolutely feature-packed rear I.O. panel this is, because as well as USB BIOS flashback and CMOS clear buttons, as well as eight Type-A USB ports with two of those being USB 3.2 Gen 2 and 2.5 gigabit LAN, the star of the show really are those pair of Thunderbolt 4 ports. So they include DP inputs, which allow you to input outputs from your graphics cards, into the motherboard and then output that signal over Thunderbolt 4 as well. And that's in addition to using the bandwidth for Thunderbolt 4 for powering all manner of other daisy chain devices such as Thunderbolt 4 hubs, higher speed networking and a whole lot more besides. So that's a big part of why this motherboard costs so much. 
The CPU has a total of 16 power phases all to itself, and the VRMs were kept fairly cool with the large VRM heat sinks, which are equipped with a heat pipe, keeping the temperature below 54 degrees C after a burn-in test with our Core i9-11900K. The M.2 temperature peaks at 67 degrees C with our PCI Express 4.0 SSD, which is one of the higher results we've seen. Uh, meanwhile, overclocking saw the both the Tomahawk and Ace hit 5.1 GHz, with the Ace managing that with a slightly lower vCore, and it also went on to get a semi-stable run at 5.2 GHz all-core, with a vCore of 1.38 volts using our Core i9-11900K. So, what do we make of these two motherboards then? Well, as I mentioned at the start, they are kind of at polar opposite assets um, of the price and feature spectrum and for that reason I think the MSI Z590 ACE is always going to be the more desirable motherboard here but with a price tag to uh, to match so you're looking at $500 or around £440 here in the UK which is a lot of money to spend on any motherboard um, if you're completely sold on the Z590 uh, chipset and you want to go with Intel either with the uh, 11 600k or the 11 700k or the 11 900k um, probably looking at F series of those processors so the KF models which ditch the integrated graphics but they're a bit cheaper Z490 and Z590 usually Intel sticks to a two chipset lifespan for its current CPUs and that's probably looking that's looking like it's going to be the case here with Alder Lake kind of making a move on from LGA 1200 so the problem you've got there is that if you go for a less premium motherboard um, you're going to be dealing with that motherboard for a while you know I would view buying a new Intel 11th gen CPU as a purchase that you're going to be living with for the next two to three years at least so with that view I'm kind of leaning towards the the ace here but given that it has so many more features I just prefer having a board with lots and lots of features and something high-end which I feel is gonna you know maybe last and keep me entertained a bit longer than something on the cheaper end of the spectrum saying that the, the Tomahawk is a perfectly good motherboard it has plenty it has plenty of features solid overclocking VRM cooling and M.2 cooling as well but yes it's cheaper but it's not that much cheaper and there are cheaper options so from my point of view it's not quite cheap enough to justify ditching a lot of the features that it does you still get Wi-Fi you still got USB type C and that kind of stuff you get some decent cooling around the VRMs but for me it's not quite as good value as some of the other Tomahawk boards that we've seen. I would maybe want to save a bit more money, you know, maybe ditch a few more features and go for something that's significantly cheaper than opt for something that's sort of not really doing either of those things. But if your limit is $300 and you're looking for something in that $300 price bracket and you definitely can't stretch to something like the M the MEG Z490 Ace, then this is going to be one of the better boards out there and if that's you then I can thoroughly recommend it. So again here today it's kind of looking at the at two very different motherboards and whether or not you would want to spend a premium or whether or not you can kind of get away with spending a bit less. You certainly can get a bit, get away with spending a bit less with the Tomahawk but you can get, get away with spending even less by opting for something that here in the UK is kind of retailing, retailing for maybe less than $200 or in the US is retailing for well south of $250 closer to the $200 price bracket and there are boards out there already that will do that. So hopefully today you've gleaned a bit about what, she, what, about what each board is about and which one you should maybe go for and just what the extra premium gets you in terms of a motherboard these days um, in particular Z590 Intel obviously usually a bit pricier um, than the AMD counterparts although not that much recently but the Ace is again a board that I would be happy to kind of benchmark for days on end putting it through its paces and really stressing it out with some thermals and overclocking and that kind of stuff the Tomahawk may be a bit a bit less so um, just because it's got slightly less uh, powerful cooling on the board and uh, less competent power circuitry still perfectly capable but for a high-end board that I would want to use myself for the next three or four years the ace is probably worth the extra money so that's it for me here today and uh, thanks for watching don't forget to stick around uh, subscribe and turn on no those notifications for more board reviews and more group tests I've got lots of cool stuff coming up and uh, thanks for watching and don't forget to leave your comments in the section below what do you think about these these two boards do you own one have you owned one of their predecessors 
which one would you maybe go for? I'm always interested to hear your opinions on that. So thanks for watching and I'll speak to you soon. Thank <laughs> you.